let's take some time to sit together because it's our lovely Tuesday tea time. So I'm going to mute those of you that were unmuted and I see you have your tea. That's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, for now, we'll just take some quiet time. We're pretty much familiar with the uh, instructions, so I'll, I'll keep them short so that we can just have some time to sit together. But of course, I always like to welcome each of us for our various ages and ethnicities and our various abilities and sexual orientation and gender identity and our cultural heritage and religious background, that we have these various complexities of our identities in this relative reality. And uh, we honor each other as we practice and undertaking a heartfelt welcome to each other and acknowledging those indigenous peoples whose lands we are on. Here in Portland, it's quite a variety of tribes from the Cowlitz, the Siletz, the tribes of the Grand Ronde that are confederated. And there's also the confederated tribes of the Siletz. So there's hundreds of tribes that are put together. And just recognizing that these communities of diverse Native people continue to live and work near and around us and that we acknowledge and honor the communities. And so we take this time to study and practice together for the benefit of all beings. And as we were talking about earlier, this living earth may we recognize that our liberation is interconnected with the liberation of all. As we take that brave, courageous, and noble position of sitting, sitting still where we are and, and looking within. Not an easy thing to do when there are so many ways to involve ourselves, so many things to get upset about, so many things to be active in. Um, it's sort of, as the Buddha said, against the stream to take moments to really look at the, the cause of suffering and how we see that on an individual basis as we settle into our seated position. Having the um, support of those who have gone before us the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, that ability to find freedom in this very life, to liberate ourselves moment to moment, whenever we can, from the greed, hatred, and delusion of the poisons around us. And we do this one breath at a time, one moment at a time, seeing what happens in the mind seeing where the mind takes us and how we can let go of some of the busy thinking and just be present with feelings in the body. So I'm going to ring the bell. I guess I'd better make sure I have the uh, original sound on again. And as you hear the bell, just let the sound arrive at the ears.
We've been here many times before arriving in our seat, choosing this seat that we can return to. The Buddha always said to find a comfortable seat under a tree or in a hut. So we have our spot. That's our nesting spot for meditation. And as we find ourselves in this position, whether it's seated or standing or lying down, we might want to move our bodies a little forward and back, side to side, finding the place that feels familiar. And just noticing as we settle the body. What might be happening right now? What are we aware of? What happens first when you gently close your eyes and Allow your breath to be natural. Maybe you want to take a couple of deep inhales and exhales just to clear out the body, the heart, the mind. If there's lethargy, we take bigger breaths to encourage energy. And where does our heart and mind go first? Does it go to thinking? Does it go to sensations in the body? Does it go to any number of the senses of hearing, which is usually one of the first most obvious ones that we can use as a returning point without identifying or grasping onto what we hear, just noticing that hearing happens? And this is also a place to open out to if we find ourselves drilling down too deep, if we're wanting to have some concentration at first with just paying attention to the breath of the nostrils or the belly. We can be there for a while, but if we find ourselves working up some sort of intensity of effort or maybe as we develop concentration, we find ourselves being a little more tired again. We can open out the attention to hearing or to touching. Maybe there's smelling to bring us really back into the present moment. And so we want to cultivate mindfulness. We want to cultivate awareness and interest around what's happening without having judgment about it. Just being present for what is. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Being present, breathing out, 
I know I am breathing out. Maybe I can notice the beginning and the end of the breath, whether it's a short breath or whether it's a long breath, having interest, curiosity, facing what's arrive, arising with curiosity. Sometimes we get drawn to pain in the body somewhere and we can let mindfulness be present with it as much as we can touch upon it, just touching it gently, noticing where its location is, noticing as we allow the attention to be there without judging about it, we might notice that the pain that we're noticing is not permanent, it moves. And if there's something that gets really intense, you can back away from it and go back to that hearing point or the touch point. and hold a broader, more open awareness. Breath by breath, we return to the present in some way. Whenever we notice that we're lost in thought, we might wake up in that moment noticing that it was a pleasant thought, or maybe it was an unpleasant thought. Maybe we can't really even tell. It's sort of confusing. It was just a thought about something. And we can go back to that breath where we notice it at the nostrils or the belly, or we can return to that touch point of our buttocks on the chair. Just being mindful moment by moment, cultivating the ability to see clearly what's happening. When do we notice that we have attachment to something that arises? Or when do we notice that we want to push something away that's unpleasant? This is where the curiosity comes in.
Every now and then we might find ourselves drifting away from the present. And we just wake up where we are in that moment. This is what's happening right now. And we just refresh the heart and mind and begin again this training, taming of the mind that oftentimes gets busy thinking or falls completely into oblivion if we aren't keeping it entertained. And we wake up in some place of unknowing and we just begin again. And sometimes it's easy to notice what arises that um, we can identify as greed or a greedy nature where we're grasping at something that we find pleasant. And we can often notice aversion. And seeing these with mindfulness, aversion perhaps if there's pain in the body or aversion if there's pain in the mind. And then that third poison, delusion, as we were talking a little bit about last week, we, we all experience it even if we don't recognize it. That's sort of the nature of delusion, that it's pervasive and it's hard for us to see sometimes. And so when we avert from unpleasant experiences or find ourselves clinging to pleasant experiences, the suffering is a little more easy to see. But because of the nature of delusion, we don't notice it so easily. And even when we do, we aren't always in touch with the suffering that's being caused because of that delusion. But sometimes we can just notice, oh yeah, this is where I am right now. And I can't really quite see the beginning or the end of anything. So we can guide the mind to go back to that breath point that we're using or to one of the other senses and just begin again these Defilements of greed, hatred, and delusion are really some of the core of our humanness. So it behooves us to find interest in watching it when it arises and even noticing it when it passes. Those are moments of clear seeing and purifying the mind and uplifting the heart. And all of this is held in this container of the body breathing and of us holding ourselves with compassion and with kindness, without judgment about what arises and passes, but still interest, just enough effort to have the right energy to be interested. Building this faith in the practice, this confidence in the practice. and having this awareness of continuity of practice and just enough energy, mindfulness is present and our concentration can become clearer, it can deepen and it can create more spaciousness in what we're holding.
And so we can incline our mind toward skillful thoughts when thinking is happening. Those five faculties, those five spiritual faculties of confidence, faith in the practice as we notice these moments over and over again. We can remember about effort and energy, just the right amount. Mindfulness is there to see clearly and hold these aspects together to enable us to nurture more concentration, which can bring us to the spacious openness of bliss. And wisdom has also arisen to really see clearly to help us incline toward useful thoughts and let go of thoughts that seem to be harming to ourselves or others. And so we just continue nurturing this clear space of awareness by noticing moment by moment what is arising and passing. This is what's happening right now.
we can gently ask ourselves what's happening now. Is it pleasant or is it unpleasant? We can bring in the feeling tone. Pleasant, unpleasant and neutral. Usually we have an opinion about something as soon as it enters our mind. So we might notice pleasant or unpleasant, but sometimes as we continue cultivating mindfulness, we can realize that something has arisen that we don't really have an opinion about. It's neutral. But awareness is happening. We're cultivating mindfulness. We're cultivating mindful awareness. Still holding ourselves in gentleness. What does that feel like? How do we hold ourselves in gentleness if we aren't used to it? How can we remember that soft feeling in our heart or what evokes thoughts of kindness for us? And can that feeling be held in the body? Can it be felt in the body? Can we let that goodness and kindness really spread within ourselves, around our heart, around our organs, around this cauldron of the body breathing? May I be at ease. May I be at ease with things just as they are. Whether they're sleepy or quiet or busy or active or have a variety of emotional tones to them, may I be with things just as they are and see them clearly. May I see how suffering occurs within me when I attach to certain thoughts and feelings, emotions and various conditions arising in the body. But as we cultivate this mindfulness and hold ourselves in kindness and compassion, we are really cultivating these moments of freedom from clinging and craving. Holding ourselves in this kindness. And perhaps equanimity can arise. We might notice that we maybe don't feel so kind toward ourselves. Or maybe our mind is wandering elsewhere and it might be something unpleasant or something very pleasant. Just continuing to Cultivate equanimity. Cultivate being at ease with the way things are. If something needs action, the right time will come for the action. 
but we can then motivate ourselves to go there from a place of equanimity, from a place of even-mindedness. And so we hold ourselves in kindness and compassion, being with ourselves when things are challenging and with others. May we hold others in our hearts. In kindness and in compassion. Those that are close to us. May they be with things the way they are and have compassion for themselves when things are difficult. Find balance with equanimity and notice joyful moments. May we notice those joyful moments within ourselves and encourage them in others. So we have these divine emotions of kindness and compassion, equanimity and joy as our foundation of development for ourselves and including others in our fathom-long heart. Spacious, unconditional field of kindness. And may we broaden this field within ourselves to include others, others whose opinion we may not agree with. Everyone wishes to be happy. They want happiness and the causes of happiness. And we can notice what happens inside of us when we might get judgmental about someone whose opinion we don't approve of, or what happens when we really approve of someone else or agree with someone else. We can see what happens in the heart with grasping and clinging or pushing away. So everything is always an opportunity for practice. But in this particular time period of generating, generating kindness and compassion for others, we want to include everyone, every human being, beings that are not human. Even the ones you might not want in your backyard. Or the ones you might not want crawling around your kitchen. May all these beings be free from harm, safe and protected, and have ease in their lives. Those that swim and fly and crawl and walk all creatures. Those known and unknown, those seen and unseen, those that are realized, have realized freedom and those who have not those in suffering and those in joy. May all beings everywhere be at ease. May they be free from suffering. May they be free from inner and outer harm. May they be free from enmity and danger.
Now let us chant the reflections on universal well-being. May I abide in well-being, in freedom from affliction, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety. And may I maintain well-being in myself. May everyone abide in well-being, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may they maintain well-being in themselves. May all beings be released from all suffering, and may they not be parted from the good fortune they have attained. When they act upon intention, all beings are the owners of their actions and inherit its results. Their future is born from such action, companion to such action, and its results will be their home. All actions with intentions, be they skillful or harmful, of such acts they will be the heirs. And so may we encourage in ourselves. May we notice our intention. May we be owners of our action, knowing that we inherit the results, that our future is born from such action and companion to the action. And so with intention, whether they're skillful or harmful, this this of this we will be the heirs may all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness may all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering may all sentient beings have joy and the causes of joy and may all sentient beings remain in great equanimity free from attachment and aversion beings be released from all suffering. And as we let our eyes open and begin to make shapes and forms and perceptions of what's around us, may we let some of this kindness that has been encouraged to fill our hearts and fill those that we see around us with kindness and compassion. Thank you for your practice. It brings me great joy. Thank you so much.